So today I'm going to talk about my history with my weight throughout my life, um, my really crappy body image and realizing that I do really actually in fact have lip edema. So um, as far back as I can remember I always thought that I was fat and that was right back primary school, maybe even before primary school and I don't know why that is. I kind of realized that I have this weird body dysmorphia thing where I see myself as, um, as I said, I've got this whole body dysmorphia thing going on where I don't, I don't see the truth anyway. So um, yeah, I don't know, it's crazy, but the, it's all, I just find it all really embarrassing and difficult, <laughs> difficult to be truthful and, and share. So here I am being truthful and sharing. Hi there, my name is Sue. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you've not been here before, I've been on the carnival diet now for uh, just coming up two years. It'll be two years at the end of May. And um, so far, I've had some really good changes to my health. And I have um, had some very slow, frustratingly slow weight loss, uh, some body recomposition. I'm down a couple of sizes and a bit of change to my body shape. Um, and I've been thinking about doing this video uh, about my weight, my issues with my weight and my body image um, for quite some time. And so I thought now is the time. So I'm actually going to share some photos a little bit further into this video uh, of me throughout my life at different stages of my life, different weights, just to show the kind of journey that I've been on with this but first up um my my first thing that i i wanted to talk about with this in this video is about my body image so i've had a really crappy body image all my life and i've kind of mulled this over lots trying to work out why um this has been a thing for me because it has been a thing for me right since i was little so um as far back as i can remember i always thought that i was fat and that was right back primary school, maybe even before primary school. And I don't know why that is. I, I kind of, I have some suspicions as to why it is, but I don't know why that is. It's, it seems unusual for a small child to think that they're fair, you know. Um, but I think I, you know, whether, whether I've brought this in from some kind of past life or something, or whether I um, have taken something on board that's been said when I was little I think is probably more likely. Um, I was always a really sensitive child, I'm still a sensitive adult and you know sometimes adults say really dumb things to children and so I kind of suspect that it was probably stuff like that that has kind of started this off. So what I've what I've found throughout my life I've kind of realized that I have this weird body dysmorphia thing where I see myself as being um, kind of a certain size no matter what size I am. So I've been everywhere from a size 8 right up to a size 24 uh, as an adult and so what I kind of noticed is that it doesn't matter where I am I still see myself as being a certain way. I can feel differently about my body depending on where I am but my the underlying kind of belief about my body and what it is and the way that I see it when I look in the mirror is kind of stays the same it's a weird thing to try and explain because like I know you know when I was a so when I was a size 24 I I was uncomfortable in my body I wasn't in a good place with my health um, and I was definitely it definitely had an impact on my um, self-esteem and the way that I felt about myself. Um, and but still, you know, when I looked in the mirror, what I saw was different from what I saw if I looked at a photograph or if I saw myself, if I caught myself in a mirror when I was out or in a shop window. Um, that would kind of take me by surprise, and I'd be like, "Oh my God, I look terrible, worse than what I was seeing in the mirror." if you understand me but when I was a size 8 and a size 10 uh, it was kind of the same thing so I 
was a lot more comfortable in my body and a lot more comfortable in my clothes obviously um i was i had more self-confidence in my body but i still had the same the same discomforts with my body if that kind of makes sense and the way that i saw myself but then when i saw photographs of myself i'd be like oh wow I actually look really good and if I caught myself in a mirror or in a shop window I wouldn't recognize myself and I'd kind of have to take a double take and go oh my god that's me and so I I didn't kind of yeah it it, it changes but it doesn't if you get my drift and so like I've I've spent you know all my childhood and through my teenage years um, believing that I was too fat I mean even in primary school I would uh, if I got sick, I would try not to eat uh, because I wanted to lose weight. And so as I kind of went through um, growing up and then becoming an adult, that was always a thing. And so I would, you know, you, you try not to eat as a teenager, remember trying not to eat and um, basically starving myself, hoping that my stomach would shrink and that I would lose weight. And then when I was older, I remember going to, for example, going to Weight Watchers when I was in my early 20s and doing what they had said to do. Because um, I remember, I don't I don't know if it was the point system back then or what it was, there were some guidelines and you could basically eat what you wanted within those guidelines. And so me being me, I would always push it towards the uh, kind of more heavy, stodgy carbohydrates and starches and things, which is what I did. Uh, and sugars as well but they told us that we could do that and so I was following what they said but I wasn't losing weight I ended up quitting Weight Watchers because it was too embarrassing because I was going back to get weight every week and wasn't losing anything and so that's kind of been the story of my life and the only times that I've actually lost weight has been when I've done something really extreme I learned a lot you know and especially through my 30s about the way that people treat other people when they're overweight or when they're of a normal weight you know because I kind of had been a size 24 and then down to a size 8 there was quite a marked difference in the way that I was treated by some people and you know that's 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 a real thing I don't think it's quite as bad these days because more people are overweight but you know back then there was less people with weight issues and so when I was in my mid-20s I was having um, some surgery and when I went to see the specialist he was a little um, su uh, specialist surgeon from Pakistan who told me in no uncertain terms that he didn't like working on Kiwi women because we were too fat and in Pakistan he could do 30 surgeries in the morning and in New Zealand he could only do 15 because we had too much fat on our stomachs and so um, I left that <laughs> meeting with him feeling a little bit um, upset and uh, demoralized and um, but I didn't say anything to him and then when I actually when it came time to have the surgery uh, I was the last on the list to, to have my surgery and uh, supposedly the laparoscope broke down and um, the surgery was done the old way so I had a big wound and I was incredibly bruised and it took me months to heal and you know I have to actually now wonder whether that bruising and the way my surgery was done was because he was um, not happy with having to operate on me um, and it was interesting because in uh, some videos I just watched recently of Dr Sean Baker interviewing Dr Catherine Seo about lipedema she was talking about you know the way that people get treated um, when they're overweight and the way that they feel about themselves and uh, Dr. Baker was saying, you know, that, that he had actually seen surgeons um, screaming at, at patients because they were overweight. He said he remembers seeing a surgeon screaming in someone's ear uh, who was um, under anaesthetic because he was so pissed off with them for being overweight and making things difficult for him, you know. And, I, and so that kind of made me think about the surgery that I'd had, you know, and, and my thoughts about whether that surgeon had um, abused me uh, while I was under anaesthetic and um, I kind of now suspect that maybe he did um, and so you know I think that that sort of thing's fairly common and, and people get blamed for being overweight but with lipedema it's actually a 
disease where the, the thought is, uh, but there's no, not enough research on it yet, as apparently, um, the thought is that it is to do with insulin and it's a hyperinsulinemia disease. So whether, I'm not sure whether that, whether that means that uh, we potentially create more insulin, but I don't know whether that would be the case or whether we are more sensitive to insulin. I suspect that it's the more sensitive to insulin that is the problem. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and so, yeah, so, you know, there was there was that instance with the surgeon. And then I remember when I was probably at my biggest, um, I went into a local TAFE college. This was when we were living in Australia to see about doing an accounting course. And the people that were behind the counter, there was an old older woman and there was a very bitchy um, gay man and um, they gave me such a hard time. I almost came out of there in tears. Um, they obviously didn't think that I was good enough to be doing an accounting course at the TAFE, and they made that quite clear. And um, so once again, I just came out feeling very, um, very upset, and it really it put me off going back, and I didn't actually go back to the TAFE college until I'd lost a whole lot of weight, and I ended up going back and doing an IT course uh, once I had more self-confidence, and I was looking out for those two, but they weren't there anymore, so I was hoping that they got fired because they were really, really quite nasty. Um, and so, yeah, so the, the ways that people um, are treated, that, that was something that became really obvious to me through that time because I had been so overweight and then down to a size eight. I mean, when I was a size eight, everybody treated me really well. I got jobs. Yeah, every interview I went for, I got the job, you know. Um, I remember being at the hairdressers and the hairdresser said to me, she said, oh, because we were talking, I was talking about, you know, losing weight or something, and she goes, oh, a little tiny thing like you wouldn't have to worry about losing weight, would you? And I said to her, crikey, if only you knew. And this is the thing, and it really hit me, because I thought she, people think that you've always been the way you are when they meet you. And that became blatantly obvious to me. And, you know, especially back then, a lot of people treated people who were overweight like they're stupid. And um, you, you see that with elderly people, with young ones as well sometimes. Like young people think that old people have always been old. You know, they don't um, kind of re consciously understand or realise that those people were young ones too and that they are heading towards what those old people are, you know. And so they'll treat old people like they're stupid. And... So yeah, it's an interesting thing and something that I learned, you know, in my 30s was not to judge a book by its cover and um, that, you know, the, that that little size 8 pretty girl that I was when I lost all that weight was the same person that was in that morbidly obese woman that people shunned, you know. So um, this is something that happens a lot happens a lot and I understand you know the surgeon's frustration at somebody being you know obese and making their job harder because that's me as well you know like when I'm working I work on people's bodies and so when I'm working on someone who's really overweight it does make it harder but it, that just is what it is you know and and you don't know where they're at in their life and what's going on with their health and and everything else so um, yeah it's just something to consider so the other thing that I'll um, I'm going to talk about in this video is lipedema. Now, I, I hadn't, I had heard of lipedema. I hadn't looked into it a whole lot. I'd seen photographs of women's legs and things and thought, yeah, that could be me. But hadn't given it too much attention until probably, I've looked a bit over the last two years, uh, but in the last couple of months in particular. And then I've just really been watching some videos and really listening to people like Dr. Catherine Seo and uh, is it, I think it's is it Leslie Keith, um, I might have her first name wrong, but I've um, been listening to them, so they are from, they've, they've got a website, the Lipedema Project, and there's, there's another one, Lipedema Simplified, I think it is, and so I've been listening to them, Dr. Sean Baker um, interviewed them recently, and that was really good interviews, and so, and I've been listening to some other interviews of theirs, and so I've kind of really just really solidified in my mind and my knowing that, yeah, I do actually have lipedema, and, you know, it's kind of, 
it was obvious to me that my mother does. Uh, my mother probably has uh, is at stage three with her legs. Um, if you go to their websites or even if you just search for lipedema stages, you'll find photographs of the four stages of lipedema. And so I would say that my mum would be probably about stage three. I think that she's done pretty well um, considering the way that her legs are. And I think that's because she's kind of eaten a fairly clean diet most of her life. I think if she'd been eating a lot of processed foods, they would have been worse. And she's still, I mean, she's still mobile and everything. She's kind of a bit knock-kneed, has been for quite a few years, uh, and has lipedema, obviously, down to her ankles um, that I can see, and potentially in her arms as well. But, um, you know, for me, I, I've i got it in areas of my legs, I kind of realise, and um, so, yeah. But... So after looking more into lipedema just recently, I kind of realised that there's... Um, there's a lot that's kind of relevant uh, for me. And so, you know, with my legs, not just the shape, but also um, looking, when I think back, you know, when I was a teenager, I remember going looking to buy some knee length boots um, and I desperately wanted a pair and all the boots I tried on, I couldn't do them up around uh, my calves, the top of my calves. And so I ended up buying a pair of knee length boots and just wearing them under trousers um, with the, but with the zips only half done up because I couldn't just couldn't find any that would do up, and I remember getting really frustrated and just yeah knowing that my stupid fat legs that I've inherited from my mother, and um, I've been that's been the case pretty much all my life not being able to buy knee length boots uh, until I found a pair a couple of years ago that I have, and the only reason that that they work for me is that they've got a second zip on the outside of the boot with a tongue inside that's probably about that wide, and so I can wear it with that, that zip down and I can actually do those up. Um, but yeah, that's the only pair of knee length boots I've ever found that actually fit me. Um, so yeah, that, that's always been a thing. And I, when I um, am looking and listening to all the kind of symptoms of lipedema, the, the pain in the fat, um, that really resonates because that's always kind of been a thing for me with my legs. Um, not so much now, like I've still, I'm still quite tender around the inside of my knees, the inside of my thighs, like if I push on them, they're actually are quite sore. Um, on my quads, I, I tend to be a bit sore as well. But you kind of, you think that that's just normal because you've always been like it. It's not until, you know, you kind of hear people talking about this and you, you're like, oh, that's, that's actually me. And yeah, maybe that's not normal. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that, got, that got me. I've been gradually looking at it more and more and have uh, really kind of settled into that understanding that, yeah, this is something that I actually do have. But I'll talk a bit more about that later. And I'm going to show you some photographs uh, that I thought long and hard about showing because I find it all a bit embarrassing. So anyway, um, I'll move on to the photos and I will run you through these photographs and my history with my weight and um, and body image even as, you know, as a child. So this is me when I was little. Um, the picture on the left, I'm not sure what age it would have been there, probably, I don't know, maybe four or five and then the one in the middle, I'm guessing I was at school, obviously. I was probably, I don't know, I might have been seven or eight there. You can, as you can see, I was uh, well covered there. And then the picture on the right-hand side, um, I think I was probably about 10 or 11 in that picture. And you can see by my face and even, you know, my body shape that um, I was pretty well covered in that one as well. Now, I remember when I was 11 years old, I weighed 11 stone, uh, which is 154 pounds or 69 kilos. And the reason I remember that is because I remember getting on the scales and um, kind of being really worried in my 11-year-old mind that because I was 11 years old and weighed 11 stone, that I was going to continue to gain a stone every year of my life. And so I'd be 12 stone when I was 12 and 13 stone when I was 13, etc., etc. Um, didn't quite work out that way, but you know, by the time I was um, 16, I was pretty, it was pretty close, as you will see. So, you know, this whole kind of body image thing started when I was, when I was little, and I don't know where that came from. I remember 
even when I was at primary school, I would have, um, I used to get tummy bugs reasonably regularly. I've spoken about my digestive issues, you know, um, in past videos. And so when I got a tummy bug, and of course I would go off my food, couldn't eat because I was vomiting. And, and then once I was feeling better, I would try not to eat because I wanted to lose weight. And I remember more than once mum threatening me uh, with eggnog to make me eat she told me if I didn't eat by the next day she was gonna make me have eggnog and I didn't like it so so then I'd eat but yeah I would try not to I would try and starve myself and that was when I was kind of at primary school so there was definitely a body image thing going on with me even when I was little and my whole belief was that I was fat and part of the this is this is kind of what confirmed it for me at, at that stage in my school photos, when I was at primary school and even at uh, intermediate, which an intermediate here in New Zealand is kind of the two years between primary school and high school. I don't know what that's called in other countries. Um, but we, when we had our school photos done like this one here, I was always seated in the front row because I was always one of the shorties. And every time, every year we had them done, I would compare my legs and my shoulders with the other girls in the front row. Now, as you can see here, my legs are quite considerably more chunky than the girls uh, alongside me. So, you know, I mean, uh, there wasn't very many overweight kids when I was at school. There was a couple of quite overweight uh, kids. I remember there was at primary school, there was one boy and one girl. And then I kind of considered myself to be the next one down. I don't know whether I was or not. Um, but in my mind, that was where I was, was I wasn't as fat as them, but I was still fat. And because most of the kids were skinny. I mean, you look at these little wee skinny legs. That's that's what most of the kids uh, were like when I was at primary school. And so for me, with my um, rather more well covered and solid legs, um, that kind of just it really confirmed for me that I was just fat. Now this photo, these photos here, these were like, obviously I was kind of maybe a very young teenager there, probably about 12, I think. And I think I was about that age in this one as well. You notice in both of them, I have a cardigan on. Now the reason that I used to wear that was because I was trying to cover my body up basically because I was too fat. And, you know, I was wearing my bikini because we were going swimming and doing other things, but, and it was hot and it was summer, you know, but um, yeah, I'd wear my cardigan um, to cover up part of my body. Now you can see obviously in that um, photo of me in the green bikini I wasn't overweight at all then but I still thought that I was and so you know my weight went up and down especially once I kind of got to that teenage age you know like you kind of start to lean out a bit due to the hormones and that happened for me as well um, but yeah I was still tended to be uh, kind of more solid than some of the girls around me, or I, at least I thought that I was. And I remember when I was about probably 13, I it was summertime, and I took to wearing not a cardigan, but a um, parka, which is the, you know, the thin raincoat type material. Um, the jackets that are all kind of all in one and they zip up into a pocket. I, I took to wearing that in the summer, and my, my parents were obviously confused about what I was why I was doing that and so mum decided that it was because um, I was concerned about my budding bosom and so she took me off to buy a training bra but it wasn't that at all it was because I was too fat and so I was just covering up the body and so then from the those ages I as I said I kind of leaned out and then I got pregnant when I was 16 with my daughter and when I was first pregnant, um, I was about nine and a half stone. Now, I'm not sure my weight had gone down from about ten and a half stone down to nine and a half. And I'm not sure whether that was prior to getting pregnant or whether it was because I was pregnant. I actually suspect now that it was because I was pregnant, um, because when I had my son, I also lost weight initially. I think the hormonal change, the increase in progesterone actually had benefits um, for me. But and that's why I lost weight initially. But with both pregnancies, I eventually that changed and it changed dramatically and I gained a huge amount of weight. So when I had my daughter, I went from um, nine and a half stone up to about 15 and a half stone. 
So I gained, you know, six stone in that pregnancy, which is about 40 odd kilos, I think, from memory. And then I, after I had her, I actually gained more. So I, I gained about another half a stone or so after I had her. I eventually lost a little bit of weight once I split up with her father. So I was in an abusive, uh, quite violent relationship with him. And um, he had a big drinking problem and a big womanizing problem. He was a year older than me. And um, he was absolutely one of the worst fathers in the world. Um, just absolutely hopeless. And so uh, while I was in that relationship, I was suffering with depression after I had her and under a lot of stress. Uh, so once I split up with him, um, things actually improved for me a little bit. So this was the time as well when I started really having a lot of issues with my gut was after I had my daughter. And I think it was um, because of the hormonal changes, having gained you know a massive amount of weight and then also the stress, just the stress, you know, getting pregnant at that age, having a baby, and being with a man who was just, yeah, not not, a, not good, wasn't it? Wasn't a good man. So um, so this was me when I was 17 years old. Um, it's funny because people talk about how, you know, women talk about how they'd like to go back to the body that they had when they were a teenager. Not me. <laughs> Absolutely not me. All right. And so I went from that at 17 so as I said, I lost a bit of weight after I split up with him. I lost about two stone and then I met my current husband and um, I had my son and gained a fair bit of weight with him as well. Uh, but then uh, we moved house, we moved into the, moved to the country and I actually started doing aerobics. That was where I kind of developed a love for aerobics. I used to do it with aerobics Oz style that was on the TV and I actually lost about two stone uh, there as well. So this was me um, kind of at that point, uh, which was probably back around the weight that I was when I met my husband. So as you can see, this it's already very up and down. <laughs> now from there, that was this one, this photo here. I was probably about 23 in that photo and then we sold up and we went to Australia and this was me sometime in my late 20s and so it's the photo, I, this is the only photograph I have at that time. I think any photos of me from that time I ripped up because I didn't want anybody looking at them. Um, so as you can see, you can't see my face in here but you can see enough to let you know what sort of condition my body was in. So when you look at my legs, you look at my hands, I couldn't get my wedding rings off because my hands and my fingers were so swollen and puffy. Um, I was puffy all over and that was, uh, I think, the highest weight that I have been in my life. Um, I'm not sure that's exactly when this photo was taken, but around this time I got up to around about uh, probably 115 kilos maybe. It might have even been more, I'm not really sure. I actually stopped weighing myself for quite a while. Um, and my health was really bad, my mental health was really bad, and I was just a bit of a mess. And so I had stopped driving the car, I didn't drive the car for five years, and um, so yeah, I wasn't in a very good place. Um, so you can, yeah, you can see kind of where I was at there, these were our doggies at the time, and we were building our house, we built a stone house in Australia, and that's kind of what you can see in the background there. I might do a video one day um, talking about what we did over there. And so this, this photo here was actually taken um, after I started losing some weight from my highest. So uh, this was after I had quit smoking. I was in my early 30s. I'd quit smoking, started exercising again, and had um, actually lost a bit of weight in there, even though I was uh, still pretty heavy. And then I went from there to here. So over uh, three years, I dropped about 30 kilos. Simply, really, it was exercise. Uh, and as I've talked about in the, uh, prior videos, I think I actually became a real exercise junkie. Um, I was exercising for many hours a day. And my diet, I gradually was, had changed my diet as well. So this is when I um, went into a vegan diet. Uh, vegetarian diet, sorry, and then eventually vegan, uh, but I was would have been vegetarian when these photographs were taken. Now, um, as I said earlier, I'm going to um, talk about the whole lipedema thing um, as well. You can see my legs, like I just have fairly big legs, but I had big legs as a kid as well. Um, but yeah, I was definitely in a better place in, at this time than I was uh, prior. And so, 
So then, then I became a vegan, and this this was me um, fairly early in the piece. Uh, I had and originally went onto a fruitarian diet, and I dropped another fifteen kilos. So this was from from here, probably this photo here to here was about fifteen kilos difference. I think most of that fifteen kilos was muscle, and you can see by my arms and that just how drawn I look that I, <laughs> I wasn't um, probably in the healthiest place at that stage. Um, I thought I was because I was a size 8 and I'd never been a size 8 uh, in my life since I was a child <laughs> and so I thought that that was um, a good place to be and I was really happy but you know even at that you know I had this um, abdominal fat and this this fat on my legs that just wouldn't go so like on my back was really really lean and my ribs would stick out I've actually got a photograph a black and white photograph where you can see all of my back and my body um and I you know my back my my spine was sticking out you can see my ribs in that photo but I had this pad of fat on my abdomen that I called my pillow that wouldn't go away and I also had um fat kind of at the top of my thighs that just wouldn't budge it's, that's never never ever gone away and so I think that that my abdomen I think I have um, obviously lipedema in my um, abdomen because that's all fibrotic now that I can actually feel and I suspect that it was back then so I suspect that there was some lipedema fat probably in my abdomen and at the tops of my thighs at that point and and that's um, why that wouldn't go now, when I kind of look back, after learning about lipedema and kind of digging into information about it and how women have success with, you know, ketogenic diets and things, I now know why the ways that I've lost weight in the past have probably worked, you know, with the whole lipedema thing. And that is because um, the, ways that it, the ways that have worked for me were exercising, which of course is moving the lymph and so, you know, when I was younger and I was exercising, that helped massively. And um, so, you know, it's, it's the, the muscles are the lymph pumps and so they're moving the lymph around. And so I think that's why that helped me so much. And also the hormonal influence of exercise when I was younger helped a lot, um, as well as helping my mental health. And then the other way... Um, the other ways that I've managed to lose weight it's always been really drastic so I, I did manage to drop some weight when I lived on just juice for three months uh, so I did a juice feast for three months um, after I had was diagnosed with an overactive thyroid in my 40s and I dropped 12 kilos but I was still overweight you know and most people probably would have been skin and bone <laughs> after that but I was actually still overweight but um but I was in a better condition than I had been, I guess. And then the other way that I've managed to lose weight um, in more recent years was is the HCG diet. So if you know what the HCG diet is, you know that it is potentially a ketogenic diet. So it's very low calorie, 500 calories. And you're basically living on 500 calories worth of uh, red meat or chicken or fish. You're allowed um, only specific fruits, so you're allowed either strawberries, apples or oranges, so I always tended to go to the, to the strawberries, so I'd eat red meat and strawberries and that was about it, um, over two meals. So, and the, the reason that I did that was because I actually lost weight quite slowly even on HCG, so um, this, in the second photo, this one here, hubby and I had actually both been on HCG. Oh, both of these photos, yeah, hubby and I had both been on HCG. He gave it a go as well. He lost so much faster than me, but I mean, that's natural because he's a male. But the next time that I did HCG, um, was this time here, and we were actually, I started it when we were in Western Australia at my sister's, and so my sister and I were doing it, and she lost lots faster than me as well. So I actually did this time, I actually did 90 days on HCG, which is twice as long as you're supposed to do as a maximum. Um, I just kept going, and so as you can see, I lost a fair bit of weight, but um, you can see my lipedema <laughs> lines on the back of my, of my thighs here. And they, they are still here, like even after the 90 days, I've still got those ridges. Um, it's interesting because, you know, you kind of always used to think that that was like cellulite, but different because, you know, when you see cellulite in women's thighs, it's generally dimply. 
whereas this isn't dimply, it's like ridges. It's kind of, if you run your hands over it, it's like tight bands across there. And so um, that that's, from my understanding, is the, is the fascia is tight, but it's uh, very common with women with lipedema, from what I understand. And you can see here that I've still got my pouchy bit on the side here, um, which I'm not sure whether you can see it on here, the, the little saddle baggy piece and you can see I've still got that abdominal fat and the kind of fat on my thighs as well and even the kind of dimply bit across my knees is still there even though everything has got smaller. The reason that I stopped at the end of 90 days was this photograph here. Um, I kind of I looked at that and went well I need to stop because I just look so tired. I'll zoom it in so you can actually see my face. <laughs> I just look so, oh god, hang on, go back, try it again. So you can see my face, my eyes were puffy, I just looked so tired and um, I thought yeah I need to actually stop this diet now because 90 days on 500 calories a day is, um, yeah it's not doing good things for me now and um, I'm actually probably not really losing any more weight so, so I stopped. And then from there, I mean, that was, I was uh, probably at that stage, I was 49 at that point. And then we moved back to New Zealand when I was 51. So this was just after we moved back to New Zealand. Um, we moved back in 2000, uh, yeah, 2015, halfway through 2015. So I'd been back in New Zealand for six months then. And then a year, less than a year later, 11 months later, look at the change there and that was the mold illness I now realize I didn't know what had happened but I just I gained so much weight so quickly um, even in this photo I had started to get I'd started to gain weight that was the year that I really started to put on weight um, and it came on really really fast and um, by the time I this photo was taken in November 2017 my health was was not good um, as you can see my face is as puffy as um, all the cord like just cortisol and inflammation and um, my weight was probably back up to I think around about 110 kilos at that point and um, lots of abdominal fat that was where I really noticed it because I had actually stopped weighing myself and then I, I kind of started to feel like I was gaining weight and then I realized I was really gaining weight when half of my thighs were taken up by my belly because I remember sitting there thinking Christ my grandkids won't be able to fit on my knee because there's no room and so yeah so this is this photo was here was taken these two were taken um, probably with a bit of weight off from this point um, and then this one was taken last year in 2023 so I'm a little bit smaller than I was in this one but probably pretty much the same shape okay and then so these are my legs and so as I said you know when it comes to lipedema I, I, I had heard of it I think I don't know when but I had kind of looked at it and thought oh yeah it looks like mum's legs it kind of looks like my own legs but I didn't look into it greatly until recently you know with um, doing carnivore and you know after being because I'm in a Facebook group for Ashley Black's fascia blasters and I'd been fascia blasting a little bit for a while I, I bought a, a set I bought a set for my for my clinic and I bought a set for myself but I kind of gave up because I thought, man, I've just got too much going on to even try and correct with these things. I've got to do something and I need to address my health. And that was when I started Carnivore uh, two years ago. But after sort of really digging into the information around lipedema and looking at um, all the signs and symptoms and everything, I really, I know now that this, that is what, you know, I do have lipedema. I have it in my legs, uh, in certain areas, and I have it in my belly for sure. Um, I'm not sure about my breasts. You can get it in your breasts as well. I don't know that I have it in my arms, maybe a little bit, but not really. My arms are pretty good, but 
my legs, you know, you can see, um, you know, in and around the knees and everything. And um, so this was only four weeks difference between when I first started on carnivore. So this photograph was taken uh, just a day or two before I started carnivore. And then this photograph was taken four weeks after I started. And you can see the difference, you know, just from reducing the inflammation. I mean, that's not fat loss. That's, that's just inflammation that's gone down and fluid loss. And, you know, listening to the information about lipedema and the pain that uh, women often experience in those lipedema fat areas, that's been me as well. Like when I think about in the past, I mean, I still, my legs are still tender around my knees, around the insides of my knees here and the insides of my thighs in particular, um, but they're nowhere near as tender as they used to be, I guess, because there is less inflammation. Um, but even that uh, fibrotic kind of fat in my belly has been quite painful in the past. It still is a little bit tender um, off and on. So there's obviously still some inflammation there. My legs at the moment, like two years into carnivore, aren't a whole lot different from this. They're a little bit, they're, they're a little bit, uh, the shapes change very slightly. They're probably a little bit smaller. They're definitely thinner. Um, but they're still that basic shape, so there was no point in really showing you a photograph of where I'm at now with those. Um, there was actually no, no weight loss there. I actually gained weight initially when I was on carnivore, so I was probably actually heavier in the second photo than I am in the first, um, and yet there's still a big, uh, you know, decent kind of difference in my legs. I didn't actually notice this difference until I was looking through photographs to do this video, and, and when I put these together, I was like, oh, wow, that's actually... There's actually quite a difference there that I kind of hadn't realised until now. So as you as you can see in those photos uh, of my legs, there um, there was a massive difference in those four weeks um, between me starting on carnivore and in four weeks later. And that was, as I said, that was with no weight loss. So I actually gained weight when I first started on carnivore because I was eating a huge amount of food, and I just was hungry and. Um, but the, the reduction in inflammation made quite a quite a big difference. Now my legs aren't a whole lot different to the way they are in that second photo. Now they're thinner, they're, they, are, they have come down a bit more, but they're basically the same shape. And so um, I, I actually have um, a, a two sets actually of fascia blasters, Ashley Black's fascia blasters, uh, which I was using a little bit uh, around the time that I started on carnivore and I gave up because I just kind of felt like that I just had too much to work on it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna do what I wanted it to at that point but I might actually get stuck in with those now um, if you're not sure what fascia blasters are I will pop a link to those below um, and you can have a look and at them uh, there are Facebook groups um, for fascia blasting there's one for women and one for men and there's some really good uh, testimonials and the way people use them that they, they create quite miraculous results for some people and for women with lipedema they can I, th I think really be helpful um, for re helping to reshape and to undo some of what's been done with the lipedema over time so as I've spoken about um, already you know like the whole frustration with the difficulty losing weight has been a thing pretty much all my life and you know, I've had some interesting conversations with people about the whole calories in, calories out model because, you know, the, as much as that all makes sense, um, it's not quite that simple for a lot of us, you know. And, you know, I said to someone just recently, there's a whole world full of women out there proving the calories in, calories out model wrong because, you know, there, there's women that gradually eat less and less and less and less as they get older until they're eating like birds and they've still got weight on them. You know, so it, it's not it's not that it's not that easy, and that's been my experience throughout my life. And, so and the diets that probably would have really helped me, like Atkins and keto, uh, and then carnivore, <laughs> carnivore, I I kind of dismissed because my whole belief system was around meat was bad and plants were the healthy way to go. And so, you know, I had friends that were doing Atkins and that were losing weight, and I just thought that they were nuts that they were going to make themselves sick because they were eating all this meat and fat and then the keto diet as well when I did try it I kind of tended to gravitate more towards you know nuts and nut butter and, and all that sort of stuff rather than meat and animal fat because once again my whole belief was that shouldn't have too much meat and animal fat and so when I was told about the carnivore diet uh, about four or five years ago by my daughter I just dismissed that as completely nuts and was like yeah 
that's that's crazy so yeah so i didn't do the things that would possibly help because women with lipedema tend to find that keto and in particular carnivore really help because it lowers the insulin that's what's thought to um, be the, the case anyway so yeah so that's um that's my history with my weight and my body image um i've i've had a pretty messed up body image i'm hoping that one day i might be able to get over there i'm 60 years old and, and to still have issues around you know body image seems a bit sad but i think it's actually really common i know it's really common even for women who are a lot older uh so um yeah i'll just i'll keep working on that and i'm hoping that with carnivore over time i will get my body to a weight in a place where i'm a lot happier with it um as i said i'm going to have a go again at the fascia blasting and see if that can create some change in my legs and my abdomen and i'm gradually getting uh, back into a little bit more exercise a little bit more consistency um, so that should help as well and uh, we'll see what i can achieve over the next year or two and um, I'm, I'm quite sure that things will will definitely improve more uh, but to what point we will see so I, was, I was saying to hubby yes, uh, yesterday when I was talking about this whole body image thing and I said to him you know like when I do my videos because of the way my body's changing on carnivore um, what's actually happening it seems is that my body's kind of thinning down from the extremities and <laughs> so, so the middle hasn't changed a whole lot um, but you know my face and my neck my neck's uh, smaller and I'm kind of smaller up here and my arms have thinned down a bit and the bottoms of my legs up to kind of just below my knees uh, have started to but the rest is kind of the same shape it's it is smaller but it's the same shape as what it was and so so if I'm doing videos in the kitchen and you uh, see more of my body especially from the back I don't like that and so I end up taking that out of the video and adjusting it so that you can't see <laughs> And I just think I just think to myself that is so sad that I still am like that. But you know, this whole putting the photographs in this video is embarrassing for me. Um, talking about my weight is embarrassing. Um, I very rarely actually say how heavy I am. I've only just mentioned that in a video just recently because that's always been a thing. You know, other women will talk about you know how much how how heavy they are, and I just I don't divulge my weight because I've always been kind of extra heavy. And I don't know. Don't know whether that's. Um, I'm guess. I guess it's my build. I don't know. But you know, like at the moment, I'm ninety, uh, about ninety three kilos or ninety four kilos, and that's really heavy for someone who's five foot four. Um, as I said, I've got this whole body dysmorphia thing going on where I don't. I don't see the truth anyway. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, but. But it's all I just find it all really embarrassing and difficult <laughs> difficult to be truthful and, and share. So here I am being truthful and sharing. So yeah, so I'd be really interested in uh, your comments and questions. Um, so if you want to pop them below, um, I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you've got this weird body with dysmorphia thing going on, uh, let me know because uh, I know I'm not the only one. And um, yeah, so if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and uh, like and share with anyone that has, has weird body dysmorphia like things going on as well um, or lipedema and yeah i thank you very much for watching and i will talk to you again another day goodbye for now